Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and we've got a whole lot of stuff coming out this Wednesday. We got new Stern, we got Transcendence upgrades, we actually have Master Ability 2 upgrades. You might not have known that some units did not have their Master Ability 2 yet, but it's true, and they're release units. They're units who've been in the game for over three years, they're just now getting their Master Ability 2. We're going to look at all of those things. Let's start, though, with the big one winged stern is coming out i got a lot to say about this guy i'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible because we got so much to talk about here we are first of all his tmr really good human killer 25 buff ap restore what a combination mini bells with human killer top tier tmr if you can wear it the thing is if you can wear it it's only these jobs who can wear it so if your favorite character happens to be one of these jobs congratulations i think you just got a top tier tmr out of that deal. I'm going to refresh this real quick so I can translate the whole thing. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, his master ability. Pretty good. The attack 10% I like. AP consumption down is nice. Reaction block rate, always good. So it's like bottom tier of good. Dream upgrade, acquired AP. I like that. AoE resist, I really like. And then he gets an upgraded skill. We'll go look at his skills here in a minute. He's Winged Knight, Paladin Ninja. He's 100 cost. He's not a limited unit. I know a lot of people are going to pull for him straight away because they've been saving for him. If that's you, go for it. If this has been your guy from the whole time, he's coming out Wednesday. Get online. Go pull for him. He's your man. If you have to skip him because you're a little bit strapped, that's fine. He will be in the game forever. You will probably get a ticket at some point or you'll off banner him if you have to skip him don't feel too bad i've gotten a lot of comments about keeping up with the game guys there is no such thing as keeping up with the game if you can't afford to pull simply do not pull now if you want to pull and you can afford to pull and you want to support the game with money that's also just fine but there's a lot of 100 cost units right now probably too many in my opinion 100 cost rates need to be boosted up to what like old 90 and 80 costs and other rates are and then boost up those older rates a little bit more they don't ask for my opinion on this stuff that's what i think do not feel like you have to pull everything i am not going to pull everything like and i've spent a lot of money on this game let's continue oh wrong thing his skills so his support abilities he has some really really good ones teachers teaching this is his aoe resist 15 with 40 defense pin top tier support ability his other new one is attack 24 and accuracy 25 also very good alternatively you could make him go faster you could make him a little bit tankier or on some maps having an extra move one jump one is super useful especially on some pve maps something like that counter ability it's really easy you just run reflex because reflex is really good so put that on feel good about yourself his new job let's scope that out for a bit shield break which gets upgraded you might say wait this kind of was a wasted upgrade like why are they spending an upgrade on his 15 ap like super cheap budget move this is why light resist is something that a lot of teams build especially dark teams they might be stuck excuse me they might be stacking light resist against you this is colorless it's just a, an elementless slashing attack with a boosted chance to hit i actually really like this move and i think there's some situations where if the enemy is stacking light resist a 165 percent typeless or colorless move will be useful so i actually like that i think it low-key like makes him stronger in that situation his single buff right here only for him 25 percent agility 30% crit rate. Pretty good. It's not even one of his better buffs, but it's still really good. He has a move 100 edge, dispels auto revive, so re-raise off for targets, 200% modifier, also a boosted chance to hit. Hits in a nice big diamond AoE, two hit combo, really powerful move, one of his staple DPS moves. Steel wings. This is his group buff, small group buff, you gotta be right next to people, but it's reaction block rate for your allies. AoE resist 20 for your allies. You can already see how there's a lot of AoE resist built into this kit, and it gives him 20 AP for himself. Very good buff. You're probably going to run this most of the time. Convergence, which gets upgraded. This gives him slash attack penetration 40 for three turns. That is important. This is not a move that only boosts slash attack for the turn it's being used on, like for that one move. This is a three turn buff. It's a real buff attached to a long range attack. 165% modifier on this attack. Now let me explain how this works. 
There's an increase to this modifier based on how few units it's hitting. This move is capable of hitting the entire enemy team, right? If it only hits two people, Okay, let me read it. Increase modifier by 25 for each enemy less in the AoE, 0 at 3. If it hits 3, the modifier is 165. If it hits 2, you add 25% to that. Then it's what? 190. If it's hitting 1, you add another 25%, which is 215. Right? Yes, 215. So the move scales up in damage based on how few units it's hitting. So it's an AoE move that if you can't use it AoE, still feels good if you're using it on a single target. I like that a lot. And it decreases healing power by 40. Overall, what a cool move. I like it. Time of Regeneration. This is an auto revive for himself, so it's re raise for him. Um, when target revives, cast a skill, AP up, so he gains some AP when he comes back to life. He will also gain 200 CT when he comes back to life, trying to get that turn before he's killed again. And it gives him slash attack and accuracy. So this is a super good buff. It's re-raise, but it's not just re-raise, it's re-raise plus all that other stuff. Okay, his new job sub job has a two hit combo move in it with disable attached to it. That's nice. And then he has a decreased CT move. There's a lot of PVE implication here. If you need somebody to knock CT down and he has some little chaining attacks on here. I don't know that he's like the best PVE unit in the game, but he's useful if you need him. Paladin. Why would you run Paladin? It does give him access to a 50% physical shield if you need that. Otherwise, there's no courage in here, so you can't do the courage re-race combo. Ninja. I don't know why you run this unless you just... Yep, I don't know. Um, and then for his limit break, an attack buff for just the move, 40%, 200% damage, gives him haste and gives him a 20% physical damage buff for three turns. So that's really, really good. Um, somebody's saying ninja sub skill. Uh, I don't know what, oh, yes. So he has his ninja job for support abilities, maybe. I don't know. I just don't know why you'd run ninja. Honestly, like decreased aggro, no. Shuriken, no. Poison mist, no. Light release, uh, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Anyway, let's talk about his weapon. So I think Rune Surge really good. Look, if he's your guy and you're going to pull for him, you're not going to be disappointed. Let me just get back on Trace right here. Um, here we go. So, Light of Dawn, his sword is also really good. Um, if you build the Vital version, you're dumb. If you build the Assault version, it's 168 Assault with 6 Accuracy. If you build the Aim version, it's 24 Accuracy, but at the cost of the attack going down to 117. I think the best build here is probably just the Assault version, unless you just need the Accuracy because you don't have some other way of getting it. Um, it's equipable by all these jobs, and the thing about this is the conditional effect is not just for him. Um, Warrior, Knight, Paladin, uh, what's his Fencer, and him can use Decrease AP Consumption 15 and Human Killer 10. Really good! And it also has Slash Attack Resist Pin 20. This is one of the better swords in the game. Everybody should be going and farming this. Super, super useful. Okay. Now, there's another piece of gear coming out. The piece of raid gear. We're moving away from Ruin Cert and into the other stuff now. Um, as far as the raid goes, I haven't got my hands on it yet, haven't got to mess with it, so this isn't a raid guide. I'm just telling you that this piece of gear is worth farming a little bit, in my opinion. The defense version, I think, is particularly the best one. 15 defense, 271 HP. That's nothing great, but look at the substats on this thing. Look at the, like, little effects. You get light resist and dark resist, two of the most seen elements in the game. Dark, you see all the time right now. With Wingstern coming out, light, you'll probably see a lot more of that. This is good against both of those. And if you're one of the FMA units, you get Human Killer 10 and Initial AP 15. Super great. So farm this thing. It's worth having at least one of. Go get it. So go get yourself one of Please at plus five. Okay. Brigandine. Another piece of raid gear is getting its plus six. And this is one of my favorite pieces of armors in the game. The um, defense version, which is my favorite one, goes up to 22 defense and 854 HP. That's really nice. It still has 10 AoE resist, but it's getting 15% more HP added to it. Awesome. I love this piece of gear. I will definitely be plus sixing that myself. A great upgrade. Now, this card. This is the card that comes out with the raid as well. It's free. You have to beat the level 5 rare raid boss, and then you can unlock the quest to go farm the shards for this card. Everybody should. 
It's attack agility uh, unit effect with critical hit rate, critical damage, and attack up. That is an amazing set of things to have for a unit that you want to do just the maximum damage they can. The drawback of this card is that it's a job-based card, and there's not really a single element that gets a ton from it. Earth has the most going with like Bradley, Queen Mashery, Urel, and Noctis someday. Like there's some good Earth units in here, but otherwise it does feel kind of rainbowy to me, which is still fine. Maybe you have a rainbow team you're building that could take full advantage of this thing, particularly a Bradley, Winged Stern, anything else team would love this card. So if you could somehow put a rainbow team together with those, they would love this the most. Hey, it's free. Build this card. It's worth building. It's really good. Has agility on it. It's great. Okay. Transcendences, level 140s, and Master Ability 2s. Let's go through these. I'm going to be quick again because we're already over 10 minutes into this video. And I know you guys like me have shorter attention spans. Thanks, TikTok. Thanks, China, for the TikTok short attention span virus. Whatever. Okay. Um, Dream Upgrade for Gilgamesh. It's not bad. He gets 20 defense pin right here. That I like that. I'm not a huge fan of debuff resistance. It's not useless. I just don't think it's the best thing in the game. Um, but he gets a hunt. He's basically undebuffable. So that's fun. And then Tiger Iron Kai, one of his skills gets upgraded. We can go look at that. It is his skill he uses the most. It's his Kotetsu skill, if you translate it to English. Um, the AoE stays diamond shaped. It gains diagonal ability, so like it can hit more than in just straight lines. Don't sleep on how important that is. Then it also has a plus 30% hit chance. So overall, Gilgamesh, very usable in PvP again. He's still going to be somebody who you either want him casting his shield and his haste on himself, then debuffing the enemy and trying to do a lot of damage, or have him be like a quicken support unit that then can back you up with like a Kotetsu. He's not top tier, but they're good buffs for him. Jaden, already super usable with just his master ability too, is picking up a much needed initial AP 15. Um, AoE resist can help him survive a little bit. And then golden grenades is getting upgraded. This is his job level 25 move. It will now break magic barriers for the target. So Jaden gains access to a magic barrier breaker. Cool. That's nice. Jaden was already still, again, super useful in PVP. He's a little bit better now. Nice upgrade for him. Velric. Now, Velric over here, let's swap this to the JP side, give it the refresh so I can translate it. I don't know why I swapped it back to English. Anyway, Velric's Dream Enhancement goes like this. 20% more HP, slash attack pin 20, and his Drain Assault gets upgraded. Here's the deal. Velric was somebody who's really good in like PvE high score teams with like his chaining ability, and his Drain Assault getting upgraded is nice for that, I suppose. The Dream Enhancement ability is all about making him try to be viable in PvP. These are both PvP stats. I think Velric could be usable in PvP if you wanted to. If you just wanted to force him, he's better now. The Drain Assault upgrade gains 30% more modifier. That's good in any game mode, right? A 200% modifier three hit move is powerful. This already has a guy with a 70% physical damage shield and healing power up and his main attack heals him. If you're fighting full physical teams and your ice, Velric could come out there and do some single target work for you, right? So there's Velric. That's what he's getting. I like it if no, for no other reason than he's going to be a better PvE unit than he was before. Eliza. Eliza was already a really good PvP unit and PvE unit. Her Dream Enhancement makes her better. So, Missile Attack Resist Pin, great for PvP. Reaction Block Rate, great for PvP. And then Hunter's Mind's Eye, getting an upgrade, that's her support ability, now gives AP Consumption down 20, that's good for PvP, and it's good for PvE as well. Running out of P running out of AP in PvE really prevents you from doing your job anymore. She'll be better at not running out now. Love it. Chunok is next. Now, Chunok is a guy who I think has been really relegated to PvE comps. They're trying to make him a little bit better for PvP here and PvE at the same time. I think this is a nod at like, hey, when you give a unit critical hit rate, critical damage, that's so good for chaining. Like, being able to cap your chaining numbers earlier just enables higher scores. So this will help him do that. That's really good. Standing Stance, the upgrade there, it looks like this. It took me a minute to find this. He essentially gets Yuffie's Ignore Sure Hit ability on his Evasion Self buff. That's good. 
does this make water PvE like top tier where you're going to be playing Chunok, Laura Croft, something? I don't, I kind of doubt it, but I do really overall like this critical hit rate, critical damage buff. So if you're a Chunok fan, he's better today than he was before. Mariel. Now, Mariel is already really good at cost 60. She's a very, very strong light element cost limited tank. She is getting AoE resist, which is great for everybody, critical evasion, which is great for tanks, and Spirit of Darkness, her skill is getting upgraded. Um, it now adds five initial aggro to her. Oh man, that's good. It's so nice for your tanks to walk into a fight with a little bit of initial hate. She gets it, and she gets it on a move that you were running 100% of the time anyway. Um, her Spirit of Darkness support ability. So love the upgrade to Mariel. They nailed that one. Renal. I don't know who uses Renal. Um, I don't, you don't see her that much. Here's what she's getting. HP 20%, AOE resist 10, and Stealth of Dissolution is getting upgraded. Stealth of Dissolution, um, is right here. Uh, it is now a group buff, evasion rate 25 for three turns for allies. So, okay, if you're running like a Dark Evade or something like that, I can see that being good. It gets magic resist 20 added to it. It still decreases her aggro by four, gives her slash evade 25, and she dispels ignore fatal damage. Like, this is a good move. I just don't know, like, how many people are playing cost limited dark evade. Not very many. So I just don't know that she still has much of a spot in the game, but maybe you're an all fan and you're all about this. She is harder to kill now with both of those. So if she does get hit, there you go. Maybe if you're running her in just like, you just need a 50 cost dark unit, maybe she's your girl. Okay, Livial. This is a really good one. I think Livial's super usable. Earth just got a huge buff this last week with King Bradley. She's getting accuracy, great. Agility, great. And Poison Black Fang of Black Magic. Her support ability you're always going to have on is getting an upgrade. Um, 40 spirit pin. Let's go. She's a really, really strong cost 50 unit now. Cost limited teams from Earth. You now have Mott and her, who I think are very powerful. A 200 cost, you could go like... Well, anyway. You could go Mott, Liviel, Bradley. Something like that, which I think would be really strong. Okay, now, the funniest ones. I saved the best for last. Guys, look at this. Here's our boy, Engelbert. Now, Engelbert has increased defense 15. That's all he's got. Master ability 1, been out since the first day of the game, has been used the whole game. My friend, you finally get some love. Master ability 2 for Engelbert. Let me translate this page real quick, guys. This is very nice. So his saintly wall gets upgraded. He finally gets the group buff for his light allies. He gains 15 more defense. All right. He gains 10 AOE resist. All right. And he gains five initial aggro. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Engelbert's back, everybody. He's back. His saintly wall upgrade um, looks like this. Instead of a 50% physical damage shield, it is now a 70% physical damage shield. So that's really good. And maybe there's some light teams that are specifically fighting like dark, Sephiroth type, you know, physical dark teams. And Engelbert slides in there and does some work for you. I'm just saying, if you see some Engelbert running around, he just got a really nice buff. So very happy for you, Engelbert. Still, it's not like light has, light has other options for tanks. Warrior of Light's pretty strong right now as well. Now, Kadia, another unit, been in the game since the beginning. Her master ability, TP40, Magic 15. Chat sold me on this girl. Like, I was not super hype about her upgrade. Here it is, you see it on the screen here. She's not getting this. She's not getting her dream enhancement yet, but she does get some important things. She gets a group buff and that's whatever. Uh, the magic goes from 15 to 35, that's good. Activation time down is good for any mage. Diagros, nice buff duration, debuff duration is a big deal because her buff um, that gets her job level 25 buff. Now, let me refresh this real quick. I want it to be in English as much as you know, the JP site can handle that. Here you go. Dual Veil Earth Defense. This is Earth Resist 35, Dark Resist 35. Soon, we will also be debuff resist 100 and protect. We don't get that yet, but it's a nice big AoE that gives 35% earth and dark resist. You already see a ton of dark resist out there. With earth having its resurgence right now, I think you will also start seeing a lot more earth. This girl is a very useful buffer 
for your Earth teams. Remember, she gets that plus one duration to it as well, and she has White Mage to back that up. Now, there's no full life here, but she has access to um, Cura. She has access to Protect and Shell. I don't know. They give Curata, Cura for some spot healing. I think that's probably where you're going with that. I still don't know if she's great. Like, I still don't know that you'll see a bunch of her running around, but that buff, that buff is really good. Okay, guys, that's it for the video. It's like a 20-minute video. If you hung in there till the end, you're an MVP of the channel. Thank you so much. My voice is so gone at this point. I'm going to cut it here. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.